Okay, so today I'm going to, to explain some of the work that we are doing in the context of the SeaGrid project. It has to do with creating a SCADA system that is intrusion tolerant, and I'll explain what this means. So I think it goes without saying that SCADA systems play a huge role in, on the way we manage uh, our power systems, and therefore it's important uh, to understand a little bit better uh, how resilient they are to failures. So the, at least from talking with several uh, uh, makers of uh, SCADA systems, what you understand is that normally what you have is you have the master controller uh, which is replicated typically with two replicas so that in case of there, if there is a crash in one of them, the other one can take over. And this is the main support that you have. So, uh, in case a crash fault happens, then th the backup will detect it, and after some synchronization time that goes in the order of tens of seconds, it catch is up and begins to work uh, as expected, and then the SCADA can continue to operate. So you have a small downtime, and you are able to tolerate a failure, which is nice. And that's why we live with this sort of solution for many years. Now, the problem is when we go to our present era where we have cyber attacks, okay? So as we have heard, and there are many examples, we have had uh, power systems being compromised and therefore we need to add further security and the type of solutions that we have observed in the past basically are based on bringing well-known technologies from IT infrastructures into the power system realm. So things that we use are firewalls and also intrusion detection systems. And as we saw yesterday, that there have been interesting advances in these areas. For instance, intrusion detection systems are becoming more and more capable of detecting more sophisticated attacks. But uh, as our colleagues told us yesterday, these systems are not perfect. And there will be attacks that will go undetected. And so the question that one might ask ourselves is, if this happens, then given the importance that a SCADA system has in running the power infrastructure, uh, maybe we should do something about it. And maybe it's prudent to assume that some of the attacks will be successful and maybe you have an intrusion in one of these replicas. So let's say this one. And if that happens, then uh, bad things can happen. So for instance, uh, setup points in RTUs can be modified maliciously and cause uh, blackout somewhere in the infrastructure. So what you would like is to build a system where the SCADA master continues to provide a correct server service even if some of its components are intruded. And this means creating an intrusion tolerant system. Now, what are the ingredients, uh, very generically, I don't have time to go through the details, that you need in order to build such sort of system? The first thing is when you build your system, you make your components highly uh, suspicious of the other components. So I will not trust what another component tells me. And the second idea is that we are not doing magic, so we have to assume that there is a bound on the amount of compromises that occur into the system. So we are doing better than we have nowadays, but it's, of course it's not possible to tolerate the case where the adversary takes full control of the system because then he can do whatever he wants. Okay? Now, for this sort of solution, what you use generically is what is called active replication or state machine uh, replication that is able to tolerate not only crash faults but also Byzantine or arbitrary faults. So the way you model a compromised component is by saying that it might act arbitrarily. So it can do whatever it wants to make the system work incorrectly. Okay? And for this sort of failures you need typically 3F plus 1 
uh, uh, replicas where f is the number of compromised replicas. So if you assume that you might have one compromised replica, you need four replicas. And this is something that you pay in order to get this intrusion tolerance capability. Now, very generically, how does a sort of system like this work? So you have components or clients that interact with the replicas. The requests get disseminated through all replicas. They all process the request in parallel, and then they all return an answer. If the system was built uh, correctly, then all of them should return the same value because they should be doing the same thing and therefore produce the same result given the same input. And therefore, if one of them is malicious and provides invalid values, you simply do a voting on the results that you get in order to throw away the ones that are uh, incorrect. And so that's basically how you need to operate now, the, the difficult thing is to build the protocols to manage all these replicas and to be able to operate even if you receive values that are invalid. And that's where you need really to work. Now, within SIGGRID, we, what we would like to do is uh, to take uh, a replication library that we have been building that has this sort of capability that I have been described and then use it in a real SCADA system. Uh, we talked about this within the project and uh, in the end what we decided it to, it is to go for an open source SCADA, take it as it is and then make it intrusion tolerant as I described. And that's exactly what we did. We looked at the available solutions, there are not that many, so we picked one called Eclipse CADA that has already been developed for several years. It's used in the field, for instance, to control some facilities here in Austria. And it's not replicated, but we are going to make it replicated and tolerate intrusions. Uh, it's already a big project, so it has almost one million lines of code, so it's a, a significant amount of code. And you take this and you, you try to, to make it intrusion tolerant. There are many uh, uh, difficulties that you need to address. A first one and basic one is that there is very limited uh, documentation and it means that you have to spend a significant amount of work doing reverse engineering. But after that, you, you understand how the system works and you can move forward. Okay, so just to give you an overview very rapid of Eclipse SCADA. So you see the same components that you have in a normal SCADA system. You have an HMI, you have the SCADA controller or the SCADA master server, and you have front ends that basically communicate with the RTUs. They basically, what they do is they translate the messages from the internal communication protocols of Eclipse SCADA to the ones that are actually used and are standardized in power line communication, in power systems. And then what you have is you have representation of the variables that you would be monitoring or setting up in the field. And this representation exists in the front ends, in the SCADA master, in the HMI. You can associate handlers to the variables in the SCADA master and, for instance, generate uh, alarms you also have some storage in order to save information as the system evolves. So it's, it's like a typical SCADA system with the, the same sort of functionality. Now, you take this system, you want to replicate the SCADA master. What kinds of problems you have to deal with? So the first one is we wanted to minimize changes into the code because it's very costly in terms of time to make these changes and after doing that you still need to prove that you didn't manage the uh, you didn't damage the correct operation of the system so you want to minimize them and then in order for replication to work you need to ensure that each replica executes exactly the same way 
And in order to do that, you need to solve several problems. So one of them is you have multiple communication channels here, and each of them can introduce non-determinism in the system. You have concurrency processing because you have many threads executing inside the SCADA master. You have interactions with the environment, namely with the clock. If you have different replicas getting values from the clock, they will not get the same value. And you have things like a synchronous message arrival, uh, which uh, means that different message will be arriving at the various replicas in different orders. And therefore, these also can cause the replicas to function in a non-deterministic way. And how, how do you deal with it? So the idea that we took is, so we have the SCADA master, we replicate the SCADA master, we have four replicas, and then to minimize changes, what we do is we get a proxy server for each one of the masters. This proxy server offers the same communication interface that existed previously, so it hides from the SCADA master all the management of the replicas and all the communication that has to go around between the replicas. You do something similar for the uh, HMI and for the front end. Uh, again, you hide uh, the actual communication that occurs in the, the network and you hide, for instance, those voting operations that I mentioned before. Okay? So at the end, you get a system like this that fulfills the objectives I have mentioned previously. Of course, we tried to minimize uh, changes, but in the end there were a few changes we had to do in the master server, namely to reduce the communication interfaces and also to ensure determination when you have multiple threads. Okay? And just to give you an idea of performance of our current implementation, so basically, we, we have a, 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 an infrastructure, an experimental infrastructure with uh, uh, three, uh, six machines where you have front end in one, HMI in another, and four other ones for each one of the replicas. And then uh, we are going to show uh, values with no replication, meaning the original Eclipse SCADA and values for our solution, which tolerates Byzantine faults. In between, you would have what, you, what exists nowadays, which is replication for crash fault tolerance. Okay? So uh, I'm going to show you just the extremes. What you have is something in between. OK. So this is a, a simple benchmark. So the idea is you have uh, updates coming to the front end that have to be communicated to the HMI, okay? And you have 10 variables or 10 items that are being monitored, and each one of them is getting something like 100 uh, modifications per second, okay? So in total, you have 1,000 modifications per, set, per second that are being transmitted to the HMI, uh, going through the, the master controller. So this is the original solution, this is our. There is a, a, a cost of 6% in our implementation, which we think it's reasonable given that we have uh, several extra communication steps in our, uh, in our uh, solution. Then uh, we made this benchmark a, a little bit more complex by adding handlers that basically look at the values that arrive at the master controller uh, and then generate alarms if necessary. So for the case where you have on the 1,000 events being generated per second, you have 50% of them generate uh, uh, alarms, uh, you have a decrease of 10%. And in the case where you have 100% of alarms, something in the order of 25%. Now, the, the last slide uh, <laughs> and the last benchmark is when you do updates on the RTUs. So you change the setup point in the HMI, 
this goes to the master server. The master server sends this to the front end, and then a, an acknowledge goes back all the way through the same path to the HMI. And when the acknowledge arrives, you go again and do the same. And in the original Eclipse SCADA, you could do something like 350 setup changes per second. In our case, you, 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 in our current prototype, you are limited to 70. So if in your system you only change setup points at a smaller rate than 70 per second, this means that this solution would work out. If you need to go faster than this, what it means is you need to integrate more the replication in, or, in order to reduce the communication steps, which are many in our case, and uh, this puts a cost in terms of performance. Okay, thank you. Okay.